What about the psychological impact on you? Because you mentioned the, at the end of the book, or towards the end of the book, how you've sort of, um, well, not collapsed, but how it's hit you. The, the significance of it has hit you and the, it was psychologically difficult to cope with. How did you get through that? Well, the publisher didn't want me to put this in and I said, no, you must, because it was a happy outcome for us. But I found myself... In, in, in the middle of severe emotional stress. Um, but that's not the, surprising. The, the fleet manager said, Richie, you've had a hard week. Why don't you take a week off? And I said, thanks, Murray. Look, I think I'll take four months off. And I needed it. And I saw I was at two problems. One is when I was recounting the flight of that fuel panel where I just didn't understand it. And we did two things. We inverted the logic like Gene Kranz did on Apollo 13. We went for an Armstrong spiral, which is written in the book. But at Which that is point, a, a, to glide, if in case we lost all the engines, yeah. I just didn't know. If you don't understand the fuel system and fuel keeps the engines running, you don't understand anything. Mm. And I mm. thought, let's get to height over the airport while we can straight away. But um, so when I get to that point, recounting it to different people, I would cry. And, and for, for an alpha male like me, ex-military, this is not normal. It's the first time in my life. And so I sought psychological help us three times they fixed that i had also had a problem where the, the 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 instance was looping around in my mind continually 24 hours a day i'd wake up after sleeping and be exhausted so i'm exposing all this because if it happened to me in a good event imagine what it's like for retired military people out of afghanistan vietnam police officers ambulance drivers these people have had stress. It's they're, the, they're your next door neighbour. They might even be your local manager at work. You don't see it. You think they're cl clean and fit. After this book, I've had about 20 emails from people saying, here's my problem. Bang, bang, bang. They just bullet point them. The dreams continue, one person said. So all these people out there have stress. The attitude is, well, women expose their their trauma and that they get helped men don't they hide and people think well build a bridge and get over the problem well you shouldn't you should expose it have it treated because i had mine treated and i'm happy to go back flying there's absolutely no um, residual effect and that's my i'm just i'd be i'm more than happy to expose my failings to try and help others but you just say failings it's not failings to have that sort of emotional reaction surely well well at the time i thought i was going nuts I, I, when I was, I would cry, I'd break down. I'd probably break down 10 times. So, and Do I thought I was going nuts. No, no, not at all. all. Not at all. No, it's all fixed. I'm flying. Uh, the psychologist, he understood all this stuff. It was very simple to them. And, and so that's why if you've had a family trauma and you've never, if you've never resolved it, then it's, you think it's gone, but it's submerged, hidden, and it will come out. It's like walking down a road and you smell a donut and it brings up back a memory of something in the past. Well, you might see uh, an image of a helicopter flying overhead and it brings back trauma mm. of Vietnam. So you really need to get all these things processed. So when you got, uh, when you got back to fly for the first time, what did you fly? Oh, well, I, I took three months off to get myself sorted out. Then I found myself looking up as airplanes flew overhead, which is a really good sign for pilots. <laughs> and um, I wanted to be back there. I'd spent a month to study and get back into the air. And when I took that first flight, it was a thrill. There was no problem. And every flight since has been a delight. And, and I, walk around the passen I walk around the cabin on every flight and I talk to the passengers. I say, if you've got questions, get them ready. I'll come and answer them all. And I talk to all the passengers. And, and that's the other delight of, of being in command. You get to meet the people and talk to them and know what they want. You get empathy with the passengers. Well, as you said, you've been in the military. You've got an extensive experience in flying. Why do you love flying? Oh, it's a combination of extreme mental skills in terms of keeping up to date these this aircraft has four million parts two hundred and fifty thousand sensors four million dollars networks that fl the data of the aircraft failing that that day went to rolls royce in derby uk to toulouse in france qantas in sydney these are amazing um technological lollipops expensive lollipops mm -hmm. but but so there's the technical side and then there's a physical side of, of, of actually moving an aeroplane. But then there's the, another part too, which is the emotional side of actually meeting all the passengers. I preferred flying transport aircraft in the military because you could get people up and uh, the passengers that come up and help for you fly. And, well, we can't quite do that in Qantas, but, 
but I love mixing and associating with the passengers and, and feeling, you know, being with them. 